Welcome back. Well, I got a package from one of our viewers today. And she very kindly sent me a dozen rolls of toilet paper. And not just any toilet paper, but my favorite brand. So I guess I disclosed that. And she paid attention. Boy, am I grateful because I have been using different brand toilet paper for a while now. So I am thrilled. Thank you so much. Now, the, the rest of the box was full of packages that I have not opened. Well, still sealed up because I wanted to wait until we could all be together and open them together. But the toilet paper was sort of stacked at the bottom, so it was hard to miss that. All right, we are going to do an unboxing when we come back. All right, let's start. Now, she is very good with her tape. She uses tape that, that releases pretty easily. And you know how I feel about tape when I have to fight my way through it. So, this is... You know, aren't you glad I didn't leave it in the box? Boy, I would have had all that to unravel as well. Okay. Oh, wait. You know what this is? This is future tidbit trays. hands are shaking. You know why? The top plate is luster wear. It's very pretty. Oh my. Oh yeah. Oh my. Okay. This is beautiful. Ah. Take a look at this. And yes, I will show some pictures of this. Look at this. It's the usual sort of blue and peach, but the blue is very lavender because it's picking up the pink in these gorgeous flowers. Um, it is a Japan, um, let's see, yeah. Um, I know that mark with three leaves. Um, this is just lovely. All right, and I have all of my tidbit making plates here on the table with me, and we're going to take a look at these, and when we're done, more, oh, beautiful, beautiful, all right. That's two, five, oh, five saucers plus two larger plates. These are probably salad plates. They might be, well, they might be bread and butter plates. Approximately seven inches, I'm going to say. I, I don't actually have a tape measure here. This is just great. Oh my goodness, here. Very pretty, and got a butterfly up here. And remember, I said butterflies on the plates are very, very popular. This is just beautiful. So, absolutely, we are going to find tidbit trays there. 
Oh. So now we've got another bag that we are opening. Ah, the painter's tape. Oh, this is lovely. This is a beautiful little bowl of Bavarian lusterware. We've got it's white in here with that very beautiful little cream ring. Remember we talked about that cream ring and I've said it usually turns up in Japan pieces. Well, here's a great example of not Japan and the cream ring. But you can tell it's not Japan because of the little design here. This is fruit. It's fruit and berries. That is not um, a, a typical Japanese design. Um, not to say Japanese don't use fruit and berries, but that particular design is, it just doesn't have the hallmarks of a Japanese piece. Oh my, look at this. This here, get that right up there. As I say, I will give you pictures of this. That is just beautiful. It's like, is that a rose? That looks like a rose. Um, and these are saucers. I'm not sure about this. It's small for a bread and butter plate, but it's not a saucer. It's interesting. In fact, you know, this would be a little on the small side for a saucer as well. So I'm not sure what that plate was used for. Um, gorgeous, and it's got a friend, so we've got three of these pieces. And they are in two different sizes, which is stupendous. Oh my. Let's take a peek at this. Ah, Nortaki. It's beautiful. Um, it's, this is a gorgeous piece. We've got a cobalt blue rim around this lovely white piece. It's not lusterware, but it is beautiful Noritake china. This is a, a dessert bowl or a berry bowl, um, individual berry bowl. A, big, a regular berry bowl is much larger. That is, that's beautiful. And it's got a friend. Wow, this beautiful gilding work here. Noritake pieces are very, very well made, as you can see and as you will see when I show you the pictures. Uh, just really sweet pieces. Just lovely, delicate gilding. So, let's see what we got. Oh, little pieces. Very exciting. Oh my gosh. Yep. That is beautiful. This is just lovely. This is a little Imari sort of piece. This, uh, uh, here, we've got our marking. It's an Imari style. This is beautiful. Wow. I am very impressed with this little piece. As you know, um, I love Japanese pieces. I love Asian porcelain in general. Pieces like this, lovely as this is, or even our beautiful Noritake. This is Japan porcelain raised to an art form. These pieces are just wonderful. Okay. Oh, my. And I was just thinking to myself, oh, I need some pieces from the mid-century. Okay. Staffordshire, Bone China, England, Crown Dorset. This is mid-century traditional. It's not mid-century modern. It's not atomic. Mid-century traditional. The sort of piece that
that would have easily been found in a 1950s home, but not a cutting edge 1950s home. In other words, this was not going to sit on a beatniks table. This was going to sit on the table of a respectable uh, matron, you know, just not Maynard G. Krebs saying, yeah, yeah, groovy man. No, I don't know, did they say groovy in the 50s? Oh no, yeah, yeah, I'm a hep cat man. There we go, that's 50s. And we have some more Noritake pieces that match the berry bowls. You know that we've got two saucers. This is great. Oh my. I'm going to have so much fun with this. This is just outstanding. Oh my, okay. Look what we have. A matching cup. Is that beautiful? Can you see that as a two-piece tidbit tray? This would be so elegant for jewelry. Or even as, as I originally started doing these, to hold the creamers and sugars in the kitchen. Um, maybe tea bags and lemon slices. Beautiful. That's beautiful. This looks remarkably like an owl. It is an owl. It is two owls. Oh my. Owl salt and pepper shakers. And, oh, these are old. They have early rubber stoppers. The way you can tell is you touch them and they are hard as rocks. But these stoppers are going to have to be removed and they're going to have to be removed carefully because if I don't take them out carefully, uh, the elasticity is gone from this, um, and this is probably uh, an early latex, it's gone. This stuff will crumble into little bits and pieces and then get stuck inside the shaker. So what I'm going to look for is corks in the right size, uh, and I have them. And then we're going to replace this with corks. Aren't they lovely? Two little white owls. Well, wasn't Hedwig a snowy owl. I think she was, wasn't she? I think so. These are our little Harry Potter owls. All right. Let's see how we're going to open you. Ooh. All right, these are great. So forgive my silence while I was doing that. As I say, I, I'm bad at unboxing because I get so wrapped up with the pretties I start to forget. I really need to be talking. Okay, California pottery. Look at this. Um, the color um, is a turquoise. It's a really pretty turquoise blue. Um, on the camera monitor, it looks blue. However, in person, it is looking more green. That could be a reflection of the fact that the lighting I'm using is, um, is a, a white light and it could be leaching the yellow out. So, 
And we've got a third one. Oh my. And this one has a little nick on it, which I can easily repair, and I will. This is going to make a three-tiered tidbit tray. It's just beautiful. And California Pottery is a wonderful company. It's uh, Many of the California Pottery pieces are very well documented. I don't want to say all because obviously I can't be sure of that, but I will be able to go online and probably come up with, uh, well, it's C614. They used a number system. I will be able to go online and actually check and see pictures of this piece as it was, which probably consisted of four of these sort of shell-shaped um, uh, semicircle pieces around a dip bowl in the middle. That is my guess. Uh, very nice. And of course I'll be able to see if it came in other colors too. Alright. Oh, we've got some little cups here. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. This is white with blue. And the blue here is, in this light, this blue is looking a little gray, and this is looking a little turquoise. Very pretty. It could be this is looking turquoise because it's picking up all the green in this uh, floral motif. And we've got a friend and some birds. These are not flowers. These are birds. You know, a sighted person would have gotten that right away. Takes me a while. These are birds. Beautiful. Okay. Now, what is this? Ah, the little creamer that goes with the little bird cups. This is just lovely. And again, I am going to uh, show you pictures of all of this because I know you're going to want to see more than I'm giving you right now. It's the little sugar. And they are small. Um, the beautiful pieces. And here is the teapot. The teapot is, geez, that's lovely too. These are great little pieces. So, let's Oh, large. We have more pieces to the set. We have beautiful little saucers, and if you note, the cups are small, so the saucers are small as well, which is great. Oh, just lovely. So we have two, two three. This uh, and these are all Japan pieces. This saucer is actually a little heavier than the other saucers and appears to be a little larger. These are small plates. Um, again, uh, I'm not sure what these plates were used for. They are too small to be bread and butter plates. They are certainly not dessert plates. Um, 
and they are about the size of saucers. And that one. So it looks to me like we have six of these sweet little plates. And they are just lovely. Um, three birds. And again, you will get pictures. Yeah, let's see what you are. guacamole aren't you a pretty little butter this is a dresser tray um, we have our typical peach luster wear the blue is very blue leaning toward turquoise as I mentioned with the cup and the cup handle in particular is leaning toward turquoise very very pretty. And a piece like this is absolutely going to make a very interesting tidbit tray. Now I should probably tell you, notice the back. Back is perfectly flat and smooth. When you do tidbit trays and you use a piece like this as the base, it's necessary to put little self-stick feet on the bottom. And I do have little feet, little, um, I, have, I have felt feet, I have little plastic feet, um, and usually when I send tidbit trays out, I will send uh, three little um, felt feet if there's anything that leads me to believe it's not going to sit flat on the table, or if the underside little saucer ridge and of course this is a beautiful piece so that saucer ridge is just it's smooth and there's no problem but if that were rough as many of them are if I thought that was likely to scratch up somebody's table I'll throw in some felt feet but in a situation like this I'm going to put the feet on the bottom of the tray so the new owner is probably not going to get any choice about having feet. It will be necessary because the hardware that goes into the center of these trays does stand a little proud of the surface. This is beautiful. Okay, so I am wondering if I have told you who sent this. Well, this is Colleen Shaver and Colleen has sent me items before and we've done unboxings but this time she sent me a card colleen c-o-l-l-e-e-n lil l-i-l 442 on ebay so i would say we need to all go check out her ebay shop and i personally am going to do everything i can to throw a little business her way to thank her for all of this this is just wonderful um yes i was not quite at the very very limit of my tidbit tray supplies but awfully gosh darn close um, when I do tidbit trays, in general, unless I specify otherwise, because you know, I, I will do some lower price tidbit trays, um, if they are a larger one-of-a-kind piece, I'm not going to make another one like it. I might make something similar, but I'm not going to make something exactly like that tidbit tray. So, as a consequence, it's not just a question of having the plates. It's having the plates I need. Because right now, I have enough plates to make a duplicate of two very interesting tidbit trays, among my favorites, that I had already done up and sold, but I, I'm not going to do it. Because then 
the person or persons, because those two trays were sold to two different people, the buyers who thought they were getting um, a, a one of a kind piece. If I just start making more, even though they are vintage pieces of china, now all of a sudden it's a two of a kind piece. So once a tray like that is made, it's done. That combination will never be used again. And because they are vintage plates, it's extremely unlikely that anyone under any circumstances is going to be able to lay their hands on the same plates to uh, duplicate that tin bit tray. So it really is going to be like completely one of a kind. That's the great thing about vintage. If you have enough interesting vintage stuff, after a while, it becomes virtually unique. Okay, now I'm going to make sure we have Colleen's address, uh, or I'm sorry, the eBay address. It's her eBay listings. We are going to do, well, I'm not sure how much time we have, but um, let's try this. How about a couple of words, and then I'll show you the pictures, and then we'll say goodbye. Candy, broken bits. Until quite recent times, uh, we said not just candy, but sugar candy. And the derivation of these words indicates that our confection must have always been on the hard side, for candy is ultimately from the Sanskrit kanda, which meant a piece of something or lump sugar. The, the two of uh, these two words, sakara kanda, are represented in Italian to form uh, zu. Zucchero, uh, zucchero, zucchero candy, our familiar sugar candy. I do not speak Italian, but of course, I'm sure you guessed that by now. Chowder. Ooh, I like this, because you know I love clam chowder. Chowder named after a pot. In the little villages of Brittany, on the north coast of France, it has long been the custom for each fisherman to toss a bit of his catch into a common mess of fish and biscuit that cooks in a community pot or chaudière. This dish was so good that its fame spread to Newfoundland and so to the east coast of the United States, and the name of the pot was soon applied to the contents, and the spelling chaudière was restyled as chowder. How nice is that? One more. Coffee. A decoction of berries. It is said that back somewhere in the year 850, long ago, a goat herd named Caldi became puzzled at the strange way his flock was acting. He noticed that they were nibbling on certain berries, so he decided to try the berries himself. He did and was so exciting, excited at the feeling of exhilaration he got that he rushed off to tell the other goat herds about the bush. The Arabs soon learned how to dry and boil the berries, and they called the brew kawe. Its use immediately stirred up a great eruption among the Orthodox Mohammedans. Some of the faithful drank their kawe to keep awake during the interminable religious services. Isn't that gracious for, yeah. Well, we talked about women and now he's hitting Muslims. Oh, what a nice guy. But for that reason, other thought, other, others thought that kawe should be barred as an intoxicant. Turkey took up the brew kawe, and this gave France her cafe, hence our word coffee. Yes, unfortunately, and I did not read the coffee entry before I started reading it out loud, I didn't pre-screen it. So I had no idea he was going after Muslims. But he's gone after everybody else. It shouldn't be a surprise. 
but frankly, I am going to have to go after this because there were things that were acceptable in the 1950s that can and most certainly will get my channel shut down if I'm not careful. All right, you've had a look at this. We're going to come up with the pictures now. When the pictures are done, uh, that's it. So thank you so much for being with me. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay sane. Remember, these comments are for you. If you need support, if you need friendship, if you need companionship, if you just need to have like a, a little internet-based exchange with someone, write in the comments. I know we are all hitting the end of our tether. I know. This will pass soon. We will be okay. We will survive. Okay. See you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.